Hey, this is BombHab. Thanks for coming, thanks for watching. It's going to be part one of our Grand Ages Let's Play series. We're going to be playing through the campaign and giving you guys a good look at the game and just basically kind of go from there. So let's go ahead and get this loaded up. I've tinkered around with the sound a little bit. Uh, the videos historically have been very quiet, but hopefully this will change it up for us and we can get this to be audible. So we're going to do the campaign here. The story takes place in a region around Constantinople in the year 1050. It'll take us through all the features of the game, and then it will turn into an open game. Sounds good. Leon Vasilios. Our shield. Uh, let's get the plump one. Yeah, it's a good plump looking shield. With fish. Can never go wrong with fish. Green fish. Green shield, gray fish. Looks good. Alrighty. Oh, let's see. I think we're gonna skip this. I'll go ahead and explain the the movement. But let's get straight into the story here. The 11th century, all of Europe is an upheaval. Bold rulers achieve new independence from churches and kings. Increasing numbers of towns that grow ever more influential arise around monasteries and dioceses. Skilled professions trade flourish, resulting in larger markets and new inventions. Increasing numbers of people learn to read and write and convents lay the foundation for a long tradition of academic scholarship. But it is also a time of conquest. The Moors press forth across the Iberian Peninsula all the way to the Pyrenees. At the heart of the continent, the Rhine divides the descendants of Charlemagne, who are at odds with each other, and the ancient horseback peoples in the eastern plains give rise to the new Polish, Hungarian, and Kievan Rus empires. The Viking territories now extend all the way to the Volga. Their descendants, the Normans, have conquered territories in France, Brittany, and on the Italian peninsula, and are forcing Rome to accept their conditions. Ooh. To the east towers Constantinople, proud heir of the Greeks and the Romans, the center of the Orthodox Church, eternal bridge between the Occident and the Orient. For generations, the Byzantines have defied the Bulgarian rebels in the west and the Seljuks in the east from this very city. They have even been able to drive back the Normans, at least so far. Oh, ominous! The rural population desires the safety that towns and cities are able to offer. But these also need to protect themselves from the greed of foreign rulers and plundering mercenary hordes. It is not enough to simply provide protection and jobs. A ruler can only consolidate his economic and military position if he continues to found additional towns and build new trade routes, and in this manner expands the territory under his dominion. The story I would like to tell you begins in Byzantium. At this time, the Empire controls all the territories between the Balkans and the sources of the Euphrates. That's good. Budding principalities, most of which are ambitious and unscrupulous. In the Senate of the capital city, Constantinople, their representatives are embroiled in a constant power struggle with the Emperor. That darn emperor. Always struggling. Always Intrigues powering. and civil war result in the emperor's throne constantly changing hands for centuries. It hey. is only under Constantine the Tenth that the empire finds a certain modicum of peace, in part thanks to his ravishing bride Eudokia, whose wisdom is known far and wide. The hero of our story grew up in Sophia, far away from the imperial court but his rise to power will be unparalleled. Okay. For now, he is as young as he is inexperienced, 
and much time will pass before I can call him my friend. Sick burn. His name is Leon Vesselios. It's us. His father made a name for himself on the eastern battlefields, and Leon, full of ambition, strives to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> Full of personal the old warrior has just been assigned to the Imperial Guard. Before he departs, he transfers control of Sophia to his son. Thank Leon you. Is to continue leading his hometown, ensuring that it prospers. Thank you, Papa. For this purpose, the father gives his son a book filled with the teachings of a certain wise leader. Thereupon, I encounter this young man for the first time. Are you a book? I am the author of that book. Oh! Listen to the teachings of Rahib the Wise. Your town is the ground on which your glory thrives, and happy is he who finds treasure on this soil. Once you have a town, quickly build businesses to create jobs. Show your subjects that your towns prosper and are not simply instruments of war. Oh, okay. All right, so basic controls. You can move your mouse each of the corners here, or you can also WASD, move around that way. Mouse will give you the big old zoom. You can get pretty close in there too. Hello, farmer. I think Q and E, yep, you can do some rotating. I forget. That's mm, there we go. Um, yeah. So we'll start from here. Uh, clicking on the town will bring up this screen. Gives you the overview of the town itself. Production. So these are the different businesses that we have in the town. Trade, which shows you how much stock you have, the price of each, of selling each at, or buying it that point uh, trader and then average price that's mostly for the trader things consumption so here's how much if if this resource is in the town the people will eat 16 per week or whatever unit of time is going on here uh, the little gear means that you make it in the actual town itself and our mission is to create a mine so we're going to go ahead and get some metals. That opens up this. And now to make a mine, we will say one more. It's going to cost 20 wood, 40 brick, 8,000 gold. Is it gold? I don't know. And eight weeks. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And On new businesses, the success of your orders will only become apparent when your market has the right commodities on offer. Once a new business has been built, all those subjects who have been patiently waiting for new jobs will automatically find their way there. Oh, but remember, Sacre bleu. if a person works, he will need to eat. Constructing new buildings to help meet this need will also be worth your while. All right, increase the production of metals by building two more mines and wait for all the labor. Wait until all the labor is hired. Okay, two more mines. And now we wait. Okay, so this is the speed of the game as it's going right now. We're going at one time speed. I'll just go through this actual whole thing. Uh, here is our available building squads and settlers. So uh, in order to expand your empire, uh, we're going to be building settlers. And whenever there's an idle one, we can click here and it'll take us to them. Uh, there's also a group of people called builders who help you construct roads and uh, roadside fortresses and whenever there's a free one of those they'll pop up here this one is for traders who are not on a currently active trade route so we have one of those uh, we're gonna go ahead and wait because I think that's gonna be a quest here but uh, that's where the trader is and then available troops so here we have a scout uh, we're gonna hold off on the scout too I think there's gonna be a quest for him but basically, it's not only going to be your scouts, it's going to be all of your idle military. You can look at them there. So that's that. And in order to speed up the game is using your space bar. You can range, so basically, you can go from 0 
0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, and 3 as natural as default speeds. Uh, when you hold spacebar, it'll move you up to times 10. Okay, so the mines are complete. We are 25 workers shy. We're getting six new workers in per week. And we have 14 free workers, so we need them to fill. Okay, there we go. Nope, we need more workers, I guess. Oh, for the second mine. And... Usually... Usually, the when you open up a trade, or whenever you open up a panel, it's going to pause the game for you in single player. In multiplayer, it doesn't pause, it just keeps going at whatever speed uh, it's currently set at. So, just kind of slight differences. The delight accompanying Leon's successes is short-lived. An Imperial courier bears the appalling news. Murderers hired by an unknown party surprised the Emperor in his chambers. Oh no! His personal guard fought bravely, but the poison on the assassin's weapons was too strong. The Emperor succumbed to his wounds, and so did Leon's father. A great responsibility now rests on Leon's shoulders. As the new head of the Royal House of Asellius, he is of course expected to travel to Constantinople for the burial. His family has been a close friend of the Imperial family for generations. But after the ceremony, the strong-willed Eudokia is to take the throne, and nobody knows what the future holds. Eudokia is a goofy name. Leon Vesselios, please accept my heartfelt condolences for the loss of your father. He served my husband faithfully and well. Hence, your family shall not be forgotten under my rule. Unfortunately, you have little time to grieve. Your presence at my coronation is of great significance politically. Please accept my gratitude for your support in this time of upheaval, Eudokia. Eudokia. Uh, wait until your business has produced enough commodities such that 120 barrels of fruit are available. So we'll have a gift. For 120, which will happen any minute now. Any minute now. <laughs> there we go. It seems as though all of Constantinople has arrived to send the Emperor off to his final resting place. Flanked by other representatives of royal houses, Leon is at the front of the funeral procession, which Why? is led by the Imperial Widow. She holds her head high as she walks through the crowds. It is not only Eudokia's beauty that draws the attention of the greedy nobles. She will soon need to choose a new spouse to whom she will transfer the Emperor's crown. The longer she hesitates, the more likely it is that civil war will break out among the power-hungry suitors. Uh -oh. This makes the oath that Eudokia swears at her coronation even harder to stomach. Before the Patriarch of the Orthodox Church, the Empress swears never to wed again. Ooh. From now on, Sick the well-being of the Empire is to be her greatest duty and only concern. Esteemed Leon, it was a pleasure to meet you in person. To answer your last question, it was not easy for me to take that oath. But this was the only way for me to secure the throne without having to deal with all the intrigues from people who hope to have my hand in marriage. <laughs> you have no idea how weary I am of it all. I hope that I will be able to find some peace on the trip that we spoke of. Perhaps even in your province. Okay. So, we are going to prepare everything to provide an appropriate welcome for the Empress. Find the town of Constanta. 
on the map, create a building squad, and locate a new trading road for to Constanta. So now we will use our scout. Almost there. And send him. Almost there. Up and about. Oh. Should be right. No about problem. There. The trade route to Constanta has not been repaired since the last war. It would be helpful if you could rectify this, as I will most likely be traveling to Sofia by Constanta. Okie dokie. So, in order to build both the settlers and the traders and the building peeps, you need to go to your inn. And from here you can recruit traders, settlers, building squad. You can also create carts. Uh, carts are used by traders. Uh, you can't send a trader out alone. He needs to be traveling with his carts. Do you wish to play against me? And then here is the mini game of Grand Ages. It's a game called uh, Test Lattice. I think we'll play that in a couple episodes, uh, but for now we'll go ahead and ignore that. So we need our building squad. Speed up time here. And now he's one of the one of the unused peeps. So we can pick him here. Gotta build a road from Sophia to Constanta. So that's the path it will take. This is the resources it will cost. Level one roads don't cost anything. And then we will say, okay. Looks good. Road completes. Esteemed Leon, I hear that you had a new thoroughfare built. That is good news. I intend to boost trade in my empire. Make use of this opportunity to consolidate the trust the town elders have in you. Speak to the mayor of Constanta and negotiate a trade license. I shall put in a good word for you. Well, oh, thank you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and talk to the mayor. Uh, the only way you can start diplomatic negotiations with a town is you need to have somebody, you need to have vision of the town. So we left our scout here, right outside of the city. And now we click on the town. This is what they're building. They're building some meat, some pastries, some beer, wool, and grain. But we don't care about that right now. What we care about is... that we will be able to achieve something together. Diplomacy! So, in order to open up a trade agreement, right now we have a transit agreement, so we can walk through their village or walk around their towns and they don't care. Well, let's go well ahead. Well, then, tell me about your offer. Add an offer. We will give you. No, you will give us a trade agreement. We will give you uh, 10,000 gold. Good. Let it be done. All right, so now we can trade. Excellent day. Our next goal, obtain a trading license and sell 300 goods. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a trade route. We've got our one trader here. Good. Next, let's plan the routes. We will go from Sofia to Constanta, back and forth. See that there, okay. And root settings. So here we can. There's three settings that we can do. There's balance, production. Uh, basically, production will kind of emphasize uh, items that are used in more advanced types of goods. For instance, in order to make uh, tools, you're going to need both coal and metal. So if you have a town that has metal and a town that has coal, you can kind of ship one to the other, and then you can also build some tools. So. Uh, and production will focus on that. And those are the only two we have available to us right now, so we're going to stick with balance. That's fine. And then we're going to add some carts. So right now, Ante Botev, no, we're going to call you. We are going to call you Mr. Speedy Pants. And let's load you up with some cards, because right now his capacity is only 100. Let's make it 300. 
And let's activate the your route. The route is ready. Okay, so here he was in Sofia. He loaded up with these goods that were he could purchase at a reasonable price. Go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. Travels along the road. Do, 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 do. And so then he sells sells high and buys low. On business dealing. It's good to have an ally, but it's even better to have many. You should conduct trade with every single one so that your empire continues to grow. Your people will thank you when there are lots of commodities at the market, and you will soon be able to take bigger steps with the profits you reap. Okay. So our next target, find more trading partners until you have four commercial agreements at your disposal. The easiest way to make contact with other towns is to watch out for their watch out for towns. Which are already connected to the roads of Sophia. Good tip. So we'll take our scout. Looks like we have a road that goes Let's off. Get on with it. Goes off that way. And if we look on our map, there's going to be a town here, and then it looks like we've got some glowy going on over here. So it's we'll nearby. send our scout there. Ah, so the da -da 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 -da. those are just random kind of special events that are happening around on the map and they're going to be kind of glowy so there's one a commodity pile so if I send somebody to go touch that it'll pick up the commodities tents sometimes have bad guys or they have helpers same with carts usually you'll go to a cart and some other guy will be there and be like hey that's my cart and then you get into some sort of battle but we're not looking to battle right now we're looking to set up some more trade routes I hope that we will be able to achieve something together. Okay, right now we're neutral. Well then, tell me about your offer. 10k. First we need transit agreement. Good. Let it be done. And Well then, tell me about your offer. How about another 10k for a trade agreement? Good. All right. Let's get on with it. And send, Let's get on with it. Send him on up. Got another town. We're practically there. Welcome. I am sure you will be impressed by the size of our barracks. Oh, size of your well, barracks. Tell me about your offer. And let's do the same type of agreement as the other Not town. A... Well then, tell me about your offer. Not a bad offer at all. All right, all right. On factories and roads. Many buyers means lots of gold in your pocket. Find just the right balance, and your people will no longer want for anything. But do not rest on your laurels. Construct additional buildings for skilled workers, and do not forget your traders either. If their carts are large, the amount of treasure they are able to carry will increase. Thank you, old man. Okay, build more production facilities in Sofia until you are in possession of 14 businesses. In particular, construct more buildings which produce goods that can be sold with partners without creating an oversupply. Additionally, add a second trade cart to at least one of your traders. Okay, so first and foremost. Almost there. We're going to send you. It's nearby. See, there's a commodity pile. Bunch of beer. Sent it to Sophia. Got some nice Almost profit. there. Oop. Oh no. 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 Let's Fleet. disappear. Okay. Oh, there's Budapest. Okay. Um Scout. Almost there. No. Hmm, Scout can't go that way. Well, we'll go this way. No problemo. We're gonna build the town out. Looks good. And we're gonna get ourselves a new trader. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, we don't own the towns. That's right. So for each town under control, you're allowed to hire one trader, one settler, and one building squad. So 
we are going to have to use Mr. Speedy Pants. And let's expand your trade route. So you go to Constanta, send you back, split, Zagreb, split. Okay. And we need to load you up with another cart. Oh, he's got enough cards. With ah. pleasure. You know what? Let's fill you up with five cards. That. We need to build some more businesses. We're at 11 out of 14. Hmm. Metal always sells pretty well. Let's just make everything three. Send you back to Sophia. Open up cart management. Four, five. Eh, let's make it six. And the journey activate. begins. Activate the route. While preparations are being made for her visit to Sophia, Eudokia travels across the eastern half of the empire. She wants to get to know the towns, cities, and provinces better. And it is also her intention that her people be able to get a better picture of their new ruler. She is particularly impressed with the flourishing settlements of Barnas, Count of Odessa, and brother of the Patriarch. The Empress seizes every opportunity to find out more about the new technologies in use in these settlements. Barnas, in turn, also expresses his interest. Kinda fist pump is he doing there? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Esteemed Leon, on my journey to Odessa, I visited Barnus, the patriarch's brother. His provinces flourish and prosper. He says that his scholars have discovered a new cultivation method for grain, three field crop rotation. I would like your farmers to utilize this new invention as well. It would bring me great joy to see your fields in their full glory when I visit Sophia. Their full glory. Oh, bully. Okay. Catch up on new technologies. Open the development dialogues. Research the three field crop rotation by using development points. Okay. So, we're getting right at about time. So, at the beginning of next episode, we're going to go over these four markers here. And one of which will be the development tab. And then we will continue the campaign. It seems to be a pretty nice looking tutorial as well, just kind of working a step by step through each of the kind of how to play the game. But, uh, but yeah, so thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you next time. Bye bye.